and we are wrestling with the news. Um, um, a, like a day or two ago, it was reported that um, Oscar and Shayna Baszler has signed new deals with WWE. Um, are you at all surprised, Kalika? Mm. Not really. I mean, Oscar. I'm to me. I've I've always been the Oscar. Oscar is it. She when she first came in, she hit that shit like a hurricane. So it's nothing new to me with her. Shayna, it's a little bit. I wouldn't say it's not surprising, but I think she's finally fighting finding her footing with this group. Um, they're, um, they're kind of finally putting her in the Shayna Baszler that we grown to have known. Because, I, I, I mean, she, at, at one, one point, point, these were two of the most dominant women in NXT. Right. Um, um, so, I, I think, think for Shayna, Shana, it's important because she just got to get back to where she was. Asta, obviously, coming off injury, it'll be a while to get the rest off, but uh, when she's on, she's on, and hey, damage control is on, it's great, and they got to continue to feud, so it makes sense. <laughs> like, it's, it's not like they could pull a Odyssey joke. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Spoke too soon. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's good for them. Uh, great for Asuka, great for Shayna, and hopefully we can just get more, more bangers out of them. Oh, yeah. I definitely think that, um, I don't really see Oscar going anywhere, honestly. I mean, she is, she's always been treated really well in WWE. And from, you know, what I've heard from other places, she's not so well in Japan. So why would she kind of go back on that level when she could stay where, you know, she's obviously appreciated? True. I, I also think that she needs to win at Mania. <laughs> She's done everything with the exception of that. And like you said, Shayna's just kind of hitting her strife right now with this group. So, you know, it would make sense that she would obviously want to stay. Um... I'm not necessarily surprised that she stayed, but, you know, you do question sometimes is somebody happy where they are. Um, clearly, she isn't, so, you know, we're going to be seeing um, her on WWE TV for um, quite some time. And... And just to piggyback, I mean, that kind of goes in with Jack Gable. Like, all the people that they're resigning are people that are finally getting that stride, right? And what I really like about it is he's, the formula is so far to me is working because it's making all the other people important. Those people who are the Shayna Baszler because you don't have to have a Cody out every week. You find other lying stories in the other people's paths. And these three obviously have paths that they need to follow. They're hitting their stride in it. So why not ride it out? We're talking about somebody that isn't hitting their stride. Um, uh, Powerhouse Hobbs. Um, haven't seen him on AEW TV for quite some time, which led to speculation on... Um, What's his contractual obligations right now? Um, Tony Khan was quick to kind of put things to rest and kind of say, um, no, he's still under contract. Um, he was just injured and making sure that he's um, okay. Um, you know, obviously Tony Khan, notorious liar. Um, do you think that Powerhouse Hobbs might be leaving AEW sooner rather than later? Mm -hmm. And would he do as it's... well in WWE, for that matter, as well? Well, well that's, that's the thing. thing. I, I think, think 
we're kind of stuck in this thing where if everybody leaves, one goes to WWE and the other one has to go to AEW. I first off, it's an it's injury. He needs to go ahead and get healthy. That's just kind of like the number one thing that needs to matter the most. Um, <clears throat> with with him, I mean, he was he's still in the Don Callis table. I'm assuming. <laughs> so, uh, so he, he's probably part of the Blackpool uh, uh, society now, for all we know. Dude, I, that's, that's the thing with AEW, like, like, they just have, like, so many gangs, and, and no one kind of really stays with it. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, oh he's still in the group? group? Oh, he left the group? Oh, he, you know, they don't, they don't make it like, oh, he's departed. Um... <laughs> So, I think he's, I think he'll be back. I think he's going to try to try to make it work with AEW. Um, he is a big mofo, and he can go when need be. I just think that WWE, I mean, not WWE, but AEW just needs to get in the mode of making everybody's path important. And that, I think, is an issue. I think that's the biggest issue. Um, Because the powerhouse Hobbs, I think he, he... If he comes back, let's see him come back, let's see where it goes. Other than that, you know, hopefully he's not lost in the shuffle. Um, because the, the flavor of the month is month is ricochet. ricochet. Um, I, I, I kind of feel like AEW like Baskin, Baskin Robbins, but maybe, maybe he'll, he'll go back to being the flavor of the month because they, they, you know, they flavor, flavor the must change. change. Yeah, there'll be two flavors, and it's ricochet to sunrise. Oh, I know, ricochet's the flavor of the month now. He said that he's already excited to be on um, Ring of Honor next month, so. I, I, did, I was thought it was a joke. He wrote I, that's literally something he tweeted. But I, 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 mean, I mean, that's good, good to get him back on Ring of Honor. Honor. My, My problem, problem is, is that the, the Ring, Ring of Honor, Honor that we know, know is not, not that. that that's not that Ring of Honor. Honor. <laughs> yeah, this is Ring of Honor light. And uh, I mean, not even light. Not even light. Ring of light. Ring of Honor zero. It has zero cost. Oh, Just one calorie, calorie not bring about her enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which is terrible, kind of terrible to say, considering like Billy Stocks is like really hitting her stride there. But you know, unfortunately, if it happens in the woods, you know. No, no now, now I will say that the whip inside is chicken. It's just that the, I mean, ever since they introduced the women's side, it's been kicking, um, even before AEW took over. It's just that they haven't, because yeah, Ring of Honor, and for those who don't know, it used to be a cult. Like, at one point, that was probably the second biggest promotion in this goddamn country. Not really, but I get what you mean. Yeah, it was okay. Put it like this: In WWE's down years, Ring of Honor was at least ahead of TNA. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yes. There we go. So that, yeah, that's, that's how dope Ring of Honor was. Oh, but I mean, it's just you know. Um, but it is what it is. Hopefully, they they kind of revitalize it, try to capture the magic that made people love Ring of Honor in the first place. Um, I'm rooting for that. I think everyone's rooting for that. Definitely. And we, um, um, talking about, um, revivalizations, um, Saturday Night's main event, uh, making a comeback. Um, there should be some type of announcement in the next couple of days. But, um, what are your thoughts on the Saturday Night Main Event coming back? Given that, um, that revitalization. 
this has to be like something to appease Peacock, right? <laughs> well, I'm just trying to figure that out, right? Like, what what channel this is gonna be on? What? You know what I'm saying? Am I the only one? Oh gosh, I told you they just appeasing them. Um, I. Let's, Let's see, see where it goes. goes. Hopefully, it's just it's not, not a bastardized version, version like it was in the 2014. What do you? You're looking for it to be something major, is that right? Yeah, because yeah, I, I mean, Saturday Night, Night Main Event. No, it's, it used to just have like uh, uh, not, not the greatest, greatest of matches. Hey, what's that? Was it Saturday Night Night main event or the main event that Hulk Hogan wrestled Andre? That was Saturday Night Main Event. But then remember, they brought it back as Saturday Night Main Event and they had opened with CM Punk versus Mark Henry. And then it just... <laughs> from there. And this is CM Punk, WWE Champion CM Punk. Yeah. Uh, I get that. Well, I feel like maybe if you start off hot with a big match that people want to see, maybe we get Roman Reigns versus Solo round one. I mean, I, I'm not going to say that there's going to be like a definitive finish to that match, but maybe something that will progress the story to that to the next story, to the next uh, phase. Maybe Solo versus uh -huh. Cody, or basically what you're kind of saying is if they treat it big, it will be big, right? Exactly. I mean, because keep in mind, it, they're trying to do Saturday Night Main Event on NBC, right? Uh, NBC just signed the Big Ten deal. So, so they're, they're doing, doing Sunday, Sunday, Saturday night, night college, college football, football along with Sunday football. football. So they, they have to make it worth it. I mean, granted, it's, it's on, on Channel 5. 5. Everyone, Everyone has, has Channel 5. 5. But just, just like SmackDown, just because SmackDown was on a channel everybody wants to watch, can watch it on doesn't mean everyone is interested in watching it. And that's the biggest key. Right. I get that. And, and that's, that's what I'm trying to give, give them something, something to actually want to tune into, into rather than just trying to cling on to the Notre Dame football, football game, game after, after it's over. over. I got you. All right. Um, uh, speaking of Cody Rhodes, um, in the midst of controversy right now, um, Cody Rhodes is being sued over the American Nightmare nickname by a band called The American Nightmares. This sounds really fucking stupid, right? Considering that he only brought that name up about 10 years ago? <laughs> this would have made sense in 2014? 2016? Um, yeah. That sounds about right. 10 years later? About, about <laughs> 10 years later, you bring this up? Like, yeah. I, uh, I it's kind of like DDP trying to sue, sue Jay Z for the diamond line. <laughs> kind of dumb. dumb. It, it really is. It's dumb. They're just trying to get a bag. And, and that's okay. Get your bag. But I knew it was a problem. When they, I knew they were going to have a problem with it. Because it's funny, this lawsuit comes right after there's a video on Twitter. Of Cody Rhodes' theme music being played by HBCU bands. I, I'm just trust. I'm just gonna throw it out there. When, when you got the HBCU bands playing his music, Hotep Cody, all of a sudden, oh yeah, let's see this. Yeah, it's like okay, it's only a problem until they're making a lot more money than we are. I mean, but that's a little late, though. I, I mean, little, that's a lot of late. Like, there's got to be a statute of limitations or some dumb shit like that. Like, bro. I feel like there should be at this point. Um, <clears throat> who's saying still wait to heaven? 
Oh, oh shit. shit. Oh, oh God. God. I totally forgot who sent it to me. I want to say. Uh, ooh. And, and I'm, I'm the music, music guy. guy. I, I should know that. that. Led yeah. Zeppelin. There you go. Led Zeppelin. There you go. Oh, agreed. Yes. Oh, Stairway to Heaven, one of their biggest songs, right? Right. right. Somebody sued them for those uh, for the the beat like a couple of years ago. I'm not talking about that. Somebody sued Led Zeppelin because the beat seemed similar to a song they made maybe a year or two prior to um uh to Stay Away to Heaven coming out. And they decided to sue them in the two thousand and tens. How the fuck hey, does that make sense? Hey, music is finicky though. Music be finicky. I'm gonna tell you right because some of the biggest lawsuits are just from little clips that that even seem. I'm just Childish Gambino got sued for This Is America. Who is it? The biggest one that people know about is Robin Thicke. Marvin Gaye State came after that ass, and and they got that ass. Uh, Jay Swift, Ed Sheeran. I mean, music is pretty key in the sense where it's like you can only only so much music can be really innovated. Like you can't like trademark the C minor chord, right? Uh, but with wrestling, it's different in the sense that it's just, dude, it ain't like this name came out of his. I mean. The name, name didn't, didn't come out of his ass. He literally did a whole video intro for the whole goddamn thing. I still remember that when he got released. Yeah, well, he did a whole video intro about who the fuck he is, and they didn't just think they didn't do the Leonardo DiCaprio meme with the ooh 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 ooh. <laughs> right, like, come on, only because now it's on T-shirts and shit. But, but they'll, they'll settle, settle and get their bread and call it a day. Shame, shame on you. Shame. shame. This, this is where I wish we had our guy. He should play the shame. Salvo. Shame. shame. He probably had it now. Shame. shame. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so you think they're actually going to get some type of money out of this, or is WWE just going to squash it? Uh, I think it's, it's it's not. It depends on what the lawsuit is. If it's Cody, they'll probably get settlement. WWE ain't budget. So, the so, right. so WWE doesn't own it. Actually, yeah, that's right. They don't. And if I'm not mistaken, so that, it's not WWE they're suing. It is Cody Rhodes that they're suing. Yeah, yeah so, they'll get a bag. They'll get a couple hundred thousand. Because Cody looks like the type of person that'll be like, okay, let's just, let's come to an agreement. Right. I'll, I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you guys play the intro at Survivor Series. <laughs> the American Nightmares, play the American Nightmares, and I'll give you $200,000. See? I, I mean... We're keeping up on he looks like the type of guy that would do that. We're keeping up on um, suit getting sued and being sued. Um, Kel- Kevin Kelly and the boys are suing AEW. <laughs> Um, the boys are not, you know, um, a new band. Uh, it is, uh, in fact, Dalton Castle's The Boys. Um, Homies. Yeah. Um, I believe we reported about them, uh, their issues with AEW um, in the past. Um, but I, this is the first time I'm hearing that they're actually taking legal action. Um, Kevin Kelly has gone on record to say that he was suing AEW in the past. Um, I think this is the first time AEW is getting sued by actual wrestlers uh, or wrestling talent. Um, what are your thoughts about this, and do you think that it's actually anything is actually going to come of it? I. I need to see the the the, 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 the what the hell is it called? Affidavit. Is it the affidavit? You know what the hell I'm talking about. Whole, I need to see the fuck paperwork. I, I need to see what they're suing for. Because it's it's 
they're, they're trying, trying to make, make it a class action lawsuit. And it's the, 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 the I guess, their independent contractors or employees. I, it, I, I see, see that, that part, part but I'm going to have to dig deeper into that and just, just read it and figure out, you know, know I need to be in it like I was with the Vince one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you will learn, you will learn what's on but the point. It's, 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 with that one. Oh, oh yeah, I was not, yo, yo that, when, when it's him, him you gotta, gotta hey, that ain't just popping out of the ass. But, it's, it was filed on August 30th. It's been a couple of weeks. Hopefully we can find it. And if I find it, I'm digging in it, and we're going to go over that afterwards. I feel like I should do these. We should start a wrestling legal. <laughs> Rest clash at the courtroom. Anyways, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, if they have, if they have something of it, uh, you know, if they, they have, have a, a, a gripe, they, they have, have a chance to get it heard in court. court. We, we just got to figure out what it is and go from there. there. Uh, uh, but it's weird, weird that Kelly and, and the boys are joining together, together in this. I think that maybe they so, I mean, like if there's more of them, that there's maybe a better chance of getting hurt. Or... I mean, that's why people typically you know, join forces when it comes to these things. Or, or they're they trying, trying to get other people to come in and help. Like, like, a, like, like, like I said, like a class action awesome. lawsuit. Have you been shit over by Nikon? Well, join us in this one. You know what I mean? Nikon. Don't talk to us then. Kelly and Kelly, law firm. Or you might be eligible for compensation. You know that shit. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to go anywhere. I would not be surprised if Tony Khan just decided to pay them a, a large sum of money just to go away because that does seem like the Tony Khan way. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. If I had to make a guesstimation what um, Scooter would say, he'd probably say um, he'd let um, Kevin Kelly and the boys join him on one of his benders for cocaine and, uh, and hookers uh, for one time. And then I would say, hey, will you stop it? And then uh, he would laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he I might not be wrong, wrong there. Coke and strippers is always, there's, there's always coke and strippers somewhere. Um, yeah. You're not wrong about that. All right, um... And a place where there was a lot of coke and hookers, um, the original WWE headquarters. Um, oh, damn. <laughs> um, damn. We just said WWE was in Ron. Like, like, Jesus Christ, man. Kind of love my segue. Um, they are actually selling the, um, the original Titan Towers. Um, it's gone for rent. Um, and like, wow, what a time, if you could rent that building, like, one of the biggest, so much history happened in that building. Um, to some degree, I do hope that it gets preserved rather than demolished, but what are your thoughts? I don't know, because what happened in Vince's affidavit happened at that time, that's a whole other that's a whole different situation right there. But yes, that was just iconic. He, he had, I still remember the, the Super Bowl commercial they had there. Oh, man. That, that, that building had the Super Bowl spot. And the DX spray paint all over it. Yeah, it's an iconic building. I mean, one of the questions I mean, took place in the tower. Is that, that the one Otis, Otis one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and he lost and he lost it in court. court. The only person to lose a buddy in bank court. court. Anyway. All the same. But yeah, I mean it, it's an iconic building. We'll see how it works. I mean, hopefully they're doing it for the low, because 
and they'll be like, this is where Vince sexually assaulted, you know, <laughs> so much sexual assault happened in that <laughs> Will you stop it? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's public record, sir. I'm sorry. If you, it is. You could still smell it to this day. And if you oh God, God and if no! You have a John Laurinaitis. Think about that. John Laurinaitis was out there ramming people in that shit. Like, think about it. John Laurinaitis was out there busting, busting them wide open. Oh God, I'm done. Oh me, Lord Jesus. Well, that's another great segue into um, Odyssey Jones, no longer with WWE. Um. It came out earlier this week that there were some um, domestic violent allegations against him. Um, WWE has always kind of been the wait and see type of stance. Um, but considering that he wasn't on Monday Night Raw and, you know, he's been a big part of the, um, the, Kofi, the New Day and the Last Testament um, rivalry. Um, and there was no mention of him. It kind of seems like WWE has completely written him out, even though um, there hasn't been any official document that he's been fired. Well, this is where I have to figure out, is this a... Because if this was WWE private company, one thing. And, and, and what I mean by WWE private company, not under TKO WWE, right? right. So, my the questions I have, and, and I know they ain't gonna be answered. This is a TKO thing, a TKO telling WWE to do it thing. A WWE did some research and realized there was some shit popping off thing. You see what I'm saying? Or is it the you know what I'm saying? Because that moved. Quick. Like, like Enzo got, got more benefit of the doubt <laughs> right. than that. So, so it, it had to been some, some fire where, where it was. was. I haven't heard, necessarily heard anything about it other than that there were <laughs> domestic uh, abuse allegations against him. I, again, I haven't heard anything more than that or that the person came forward, or that it was a big, you know, what to do. Only that it was happened and WWE took action. Um, so, it is interesting because I do believe this is the first thing that's happened of this nature. Um, it's the first thing that's happened like this under the Triple H regime. So, if it's, if that's how they're dealing with things, then that's how they're, they're dealing with things at this point, I guess. But I feel like some type of a statement should have been said, like, you know, we fired him. You know what I mean? But we haven't even got that. He just got moved to, uh, um the alumni section of the, um, the website. Hey, man, something you got to tell everybody. <laughs> sometimes, 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 some shit you don't need to tell nobody, but I get your point. Hoping, but, you know, I mean, but I think I, it had to been something, something, something had to been there because it's odd to have him get ready to break up only like the longest running faction ever since the four horsemen and then all of a sudden pluck the man who's going to make it happen from there right and, and, and it must have been really bad shit obviously clearly unless they were doing their own investigation because it could be something where they saw it coming but I don't, I don't give WWE that benefit of the doubt because they shit wouldn't have put him on TV if they knew that shit was coming. Right, in such a prominent role. Right. So, yeah, that's a huge deal to be the dude that's 
about to make Xavier Woods turn heel. And like I said, Karrion Cross out here catching these bodies, making everybody change their personality. Loki. <laughs> <laughs> a little yeah. bit, uh, that's a little too um, deep, um, you know, personalized, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he is catching bodies. Hey, man, he made AJ turn heel. He made Nakamura come back straight. He made, come back the good guy. He made, uh, he made Rey Mysterio's son turn on him. <laughs> like, it's been, like, fucking people up. <laughs> The Miz was a heel, now he's a face. Like, If only he got actual credit for it. I mean, honestly, the, the, there's people in the community who are putting those timelines there. It's just that people are not really... Because, once again, we're, we're kind of focused on the wins and losses of him when we should be focused on how he's making people come to the other side. Kind of like how Bray Wyatt was like that gatekeeper where everyone that wrestled Bray wasn't the same. But you but you do have to realize these are the same people that are saying that Tangaloa is better than Dusty Rhodes because he won a title in a, in a WWE. One title that he was given. Wait a minute, Karrion Cross said that? No, the internet uh, community said that. Oh, oh I, I mean, mean I, I didn't say, say the, the, the the dumb ones. ones. I, I just said the ones who paid attention. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, we got our extremes, but I'm talking about the people that's got common sense. The 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 eighty percent. Is it? Or how about this? It's it's rule of ten, right? Three that are extreme. Three that are extreme. And then you yeah, got that six, six in the middle. We are part of that six in the middle. Six six in the middle. middle. Or at least I try to be a part of the six in the middle. I don't know. I think uh, Tonga Loma might be better than Dusty Rhodes. I mean, he literally did nothing to win a title. And he won a fucking title. With one eye. Hey, that, <laughs> that, 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 yeah. Won a title with one eye, son. Yeah. Didn't need to lift a finger. Oh, uh, Jacob Fatu did all the shit. Did all the business. Oh, Jacob Fatu. I cannot wait to they get okay. Rookie of the year? <laughs> I mean, he's not a rookie, but shit. WWE's rookie of the year. I mean, break up sure. Oh, yeah. uh, but, yeah. Back to Odyssey. Oh, uh, yeah, Odyssey out the paint, just like that. I mean, even. That's weird, because Velveteen's dream didn't even get. That kind of a cutoff that fast. Um, yeah. It must so have that's why I'm like. That must have been really bad shit. It must have been. That's the only thing I could think. Either it was really bad shit, or they're covering. They didn't, they don't want bad PR right now. So they're covering their asses before anything bad happens. Just in my opinion. Hi. What, what would be the PR, PR for someone that just popped on TV? Like, well, I mean, you don't want brand it. new rookie. It's, it's not, not like the NFL, NFL where they go NFL, NFL player. player. Nah, 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 nah. Well, I mean, your your big your new superstar that you're trying to promote is suddenly has domestic violence allegations against them. You know, it's not the best you know look. You know what? That's about to start, right? Background checks. They about to start background checks. What? <laughs> you go. You gonna have to damn near have a perfect secret clearance to work for WWE now. God damn it! <laughs> there goes my. Yeah. There goes my hopes. Well, now we're. I mean, with my job, I got a clearance. I think it can transfer over. <laughs> hoping. 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 Um, it was reported uh, earlier this week, or maybe it was just announced, that um, WWE legend Victoria has signed a legends deal um, to be featured uh, with merchandise, make a couple appearances, um, be featured in uh, content going forward. Um, 
this has to spark some speculation that Victoria is going into the Hall of Fame this year, no? Next, Next year, year, maybe. I mean, I mean it's, it's in Cali. Cali. I, mean, I mean, it's Vegas. Vegas. She, she lives, lives in Dago. Uh, she's on a lot. So, I mean, yeah, yeah it, it's coming down, down the pike. pike. That, that girl, girl choked me in front of my two year old son. Hmm. Real talk. I mean, I mean never mind. Scratch, 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 scratch. We took a picture, and the picture is of her choking me while I'm holding my two year old son. Well, Which is the oddest, pic oddest picture ever. Because my kid is like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Why'd you piss her off? Like, why is this bitch choking you? Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, but congrats to her. She's long overdue. She's probably been like the, uh, she has always been the Russell Khan staple. She stayed at Russell Town a lot. So, I mean, hopefully she can still get more of those appearances and get that bread, baby. Plus, she had Dago, so she, I'd probably catch her out somewhere. You know, Whole Foods somewhere. Quite possibly. Um, somebody else that signed a, 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 a renewed his contract with WWE for Legend Steel. Um, a one Hulk Hogan. Um, and if you've, uh, heard his interview with Logan Paul on, um, last week, uh, you know, he, he quite, uh, he added quite a bit of buzz and controversy when it comes to just being Hulk Hogan. But I feel like that's just Hulk Hogan at this point, no, Coleco? I mean, it's, it's weird, because I got a... I got an autographed Hulk Hogan figure, and my kid is it's in his room, and I'm like, Ugh, yeah, you really want to get rid of it. <laughs> Hulk Hogan's stock is plummeting right now, <laughs> all because he just decided to jump into politics, the dirtiest thing we can think of right now. But uh, he felt the conviction to do it, he did it. Now... The problem with that is it's making that 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 Gawker tape that he did 12 years ago seem a lot more accurate <laughs> than, than what we than what we tried to give him the benefit of the doubt of. But I mean, Hulk Hogan, he for all that's worth, you can separate Hulk Hogan the wrestler from Hulk Hogan. The man and Hulk Hogan, the wrestler. Without him, this shit. Hulk Hogan, the wrestler. It wouldn't even be this. So, congratulations, Hulk Hogan, the wrestler. Terry Bolella, step on the stack of needles. Do you actually know what he said during the interview? No, I don't. But I mean, would you like me to tell you what he said? I, I mean, mean, I just saw him in a certain thing, and then, yeah, that, that kind of rubbed everybody the wrong way. But, <laughs> well, go, go ahead. ahead. Please, Please add gasoline to the Dabby Mascasolina, as Daddy Yankee said. Well, let's start with the least offensive of all the things he said. Um, the first one see, saying, um, Bret Hart hates everybody. Um, he's just, um... A Bret Hart hates everybody. The dude needs to learn how to uh, to not take himself so seriously. Not so well. But, but Bret Hart has beef with Hulk Hogan. Legit beef. I've never. I could. But I could feel like that's maybe not the most controversial thing you could say. I mean, he does. Bret Hart does have beef with everybody. <laughs> Like he can not true. Want to not true. He buried it with Sean. If he buried it with Sean and Sean was like bad personal, I'm pretty sure he don't hate everybody. I mean, you know, Some of it. this is still the guy that said fuck up Goldberg. Goldberg fucking damn near killed him. I would say fuck him too. Okay. The second thing... If someone fucking... If, if someone fucking paralyzed half of my side for a while, I'd be like, fuck you too. 
shit, man, look. Dead ass. And the Hogan thing, though, the, the, the Brett Hogan thing, though, that goes to, like, 93. So that, I mean, that's, like, WrestleMania 9. So, and I always thought that was finicky. Even nine-year-old me was like, why the fuck is this dude? Why the fuck this dude pop off helping him? And Brett's like, yeah, go get the title that I couldn't get. Like, the fuck? <laughs> You were like, it felt like, like you were like, I can't wait for James to be born so we could talk about this shit in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, or it's like when you can't beat the dude, but the dude that's trying to help you get yourself better, you tell him to go kick his ass for you. Like, what? <laughs> like, what? But, yeah. But then again, that was the whole thing, because Hogan was supposed to lose it to Brett, and that didn't happen. So, I mean, that's 20 years. That's a game you have to of course. And Bret Hart, I'm just going to be like this. I'm team Brett with this one because I've seen his wife. He is invited to the cookout. Team Brett all the way, sir. <laughs> so let's go to the second most the, – the second – Hulk Hogan claims that he never used creative control in his WCW uh, run. Now, now that's bullshit. bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's, that's bullshit. Uh, <laughs> Eric Bischoff got some shit to say to you, sir. <laughs> I mean, and Macho, Macho Man, if he was alive, he'd be like, motherfucker. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that, that's Cap all the way. And the last thing he said was, um, the most controversial was, that wrestling fans are very forgiving, and that he's fortunate that they were able to forgive him. Um, they're so forgiving that they forgive they forgave Chris Benoit for all the bad shit he did. Um, so he's grateful that they forgave him for everything that he's done. Oh I'm, God, I'm, Jesus! I'm Christ. Here, but yeah, that was basically what he said. Um, yeah. yeah. Putting, Putting yourself in the same sense with Benoit. Benoit? Uh, it is a very bizarre I think... It is a bizarre comparison. I think... Now, there's an extreme where people think the wrestler is the human being. There are people like me where I could separate Blank the wrestler from Blank the person. Um, Blake, like, Chris Benoit is a human being. That part, hey, that's a shitty shit. Chris Benoit is a wrestler. Pretty goddamn good. Am I going to die on that hill? Not a hill worth dying on. Same with Hulk Hogan. Uh, but the problem is he's so transformational. He's a transformational figure because he is the genesis of the Mount Rushmore that we know in wrestling. Now, some people are going to say Ric Flair. And some people have their, their right to say that, but... When, when most, most people think wrestling, wrestling, they're thinking Hulk Hogan. Right. He was the first pro wrestling celebrity. Not, Not saying Ric Flair wasn't, but Ric Flair wasn't on the cover of Sports Illustrated, motherfucker. Like the, that was a big fucking that was a big fucking deal. Like that, a guy from a sport where people say it's quote unquote fake is on the cover of a magazine that covers all sports. Like, <laughs> so it, he, he's just being the polarizing figure that he is. Um, I feel like he does say a lot of I think, stupid shit just to get people buzzing and talking. You know, he he is from I mean, a very you know. He's from the bygone era where, you know, you store the pot. You know, you you put yourself over, brother. You know what I mean? I mean, he's, yeah. People, he's for speaking at the, the uh, 
See, See now, now this, this is where it goes crazy, and I'm about to go left. So there's been these underlying memes of Hulk Hogan being low key racist, <laughs> and he's not doing anything to quell that, right? <laughs> In the eyes of the African American community, right? <laughs> so these comments are just somewhat par for the course. Uh, Terry Bo, I take him as that's Terry Boella, not Hulk Hogan. Um, even though you know, it's like, oh, but he is. You give him a point. He's talking as as Hulk Hogan, the man, not Hulk Hogan, the wrestling character. Um, yeah, it's just weird. But he hasn't been right since. He decided to. I think a lot of people, and when he put himself in the politic arena, that's when it kind of went left. Oh, I flipped the mic. No, 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 no. I'm, ta- I'm talking about the whole. I mean, Hulk Hogan was already left. Is when I'm talking about not left as in left right politics. I'm just talking about going left like off the track. Like, that shit just. That shit just went off the rail. So now you're at this point where it's like, there's people like literally in the Canadian community like, fuck Hulk Hogan or he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And the last bit of news this week. Um, it was uh, announced uh, that former WWE superstar Emma uh, has unfortunately got injured with the nine-month injury of pregnancy. Um, God damn it, Matt Anyway. Yes, so injury was inflicted by Matt Catmoss. Oh, yeah, yeah. Congrats on the baby. I'm just... It shouldn't have been me. But anyway... But anyways, congratulations to Emma. I told you, I, well, you know, I ride on Emma until... To the, to the day I die. Yes, you are a big Emma fan. Oh, uh, uh, but, but but her with me, Yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. I mean, the guy with the suspenders that was there, the Iggy's Iggy. I mean, hey, it speaks volumes about her career, you no? Know? <laughs> I mean, but, um, it just made me. I just, I'm you know, I, about yeah, yeah no, you, you are, are, because to me, I, it broke my heart, I thought I had a shot, I was at, I was at, what was it, LAX, the, the LAX WrestleFest, I was there, I was spinning my game, yo, I was trying, I was trying to rizz it up, there goes my baby, <laughs> Oh my god! Oh. My, my baby got a baby. Look, <laughs> okay. I live. I live. I think you'll be fine, and I think your wife would appreciate that as well. Hey, hey man, Miss Parker, Parker, you next. Parker. Jada, Jada Parker. Parker. Uh, all right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Hey, Miss Parker. Just going down the line. Whatever, first one that says yes. Hey. Here you go. Miss one. Buses. Miss one. Next 15 one coming. Breaker? Alright. Um, <laughs> that will conclude our coverage of the news. Hey, folks. This is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.